Here is a video that I could not find anywhere on YouTube, and um, I'm not saying they don't have it out there, but um, I couldn't find anything, any information on framing a corner cantilevered balcony. And I have seen it done before. They take and they run a um, support board across the center like this, and usually it doesn't it doesn't seem to be. Um, very sturdy. This, however, does seem to be um, sturdy. I'm not going to even focus on that, the other method. I might go ahead and draw it up. If you want, leave a comment in the comment area. And if a few people uh, want the video, I will make it to show you how they used to do it a long time ago. But this seems like a good idea. You're basically going to use a couple of stronger beams. These are going to need to be a little uh, wider, a little more heavy duty because they're going to use a hanger that is turned upside down, not going to be the way that a hanger normally um, is used. And it's basically going to, these two beams here are going to create a beam here that can cantilever out and support a beam here. So these two beams here are basically going to be cantilevering out to support this beam. And uh, these two beams right here are going to be the key to this whole operation. So I just wanted to kind of get started with this right here to give you a general idea. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, um, hopefully the looking at the completed balcony will um, help you make a little more sense out of it. So let's go ahead and pick this baby apart, uh, take a tour of it. Now, I did notch the beam. We lowered the floor an inch. Um, around the perimeter here and that's for water um, so that we can flash the deck and uh, try to eliminate water from draining into the uh, living area. So everything on the bottom is going to be flat or level. All of the bottom boards are going to be used to create a nice flat surface area that can be finished with stucco or some type of siding. Now let's go ahead and remove the joist and take a look at how I notched the beams. And this, of course, will be for the drainage to allow for the water to drain away. It will slope about a quarter of an inch per foot. And uh, again, you can see the beams are still the same sizes, the same width. They're just shaped now. So we have it sloping. And then this one here is a, this beam here and this one here will be the same size. Sloping, sloping here, quarter of an inch per foot. Uh, give you a view of the hangers. We have the inverted hanger or the concealed flange hanger, I believe. And then the upside down hanger. Another upside down hanger and then a view of it, of course. So this is going to allow us, so when the weight from this is forced down. The weight from the cantilever here, we're gonna have a lot of weight being forced down from this area, especially since this is going to be supporting the beam over here. So by turning the hangers upside down, we can reverse the way that the load is being transferred between the beams. So again, take a look at it there. Upside down, uh, the normal way, right side up, I should say. And of course, I wanted to give you an idea what it would look like with the notch one inch down here. So if this is a two by 12 and we dropped it an inch, then we would have 10 and a half inches here. And if we sloped it, we're dealing with four foot, let's say, and we need to drop it another inch to get a quarter of an inch per foot slope, then the end here would be nine and a half inches. And of course we could use a four by 10 at the end. Now let's go ahead and build each section individually, give you a better idea of what we're doing here. 2x12s here and a 2x12 rim joist. If, you're, if you were going to use truss joist, you could always use that with the rims uh, materials that uh, they come with. And we will fill the next section in, except we're going to need some hangers back here to support the floor joists and of course uh, the way that the system here is designed to uh, support the cantilever beam at the end. And of course we are going to need some ledgers 
Ledgers will be an inch smaller if we are dropping it down. Remember I said that the bottom needs to be the same. Of course, if you're going to design something different, you could drop the bottom. The design that we're dealing with here is going to have a all of the joists on the bottom are going to be even with each other or flush so that we can create a nice flat surface. Go ahead and fill the joist in. Now remember these joists are going to be shaped uh, the same as the beams here so that we can get a slope coming away from the building. Ledger, we don't need to go all the way across with our ledger. And then, of course, we will fill the joist in here. Now, all of these joists are going to be shaped until you get down to the last three here or whatever you're going to be using because uh, the slope as this beam changes sizes um, or width every uh, foot or 16 inches, whatever our spacing is, we're going to need to adjust the joist accordingly. So. If we have nine and a half inches here, this beam here is going to be the same width. Nine and a half inches, let's just say. So all of these joists at this end are going to be nine and a half inches wide. But over here, if we're dropping from ten and a half inches to nine and a half inches, we could have a joist that's going to be maybe nine and three quarters, maybe um, ten and a quarter. And then maybe, um, or I should say, you know, nine and three quarters, 10, 10 inches, 10 and a quarter for this one, something like that. Then we will need to shape these boards accordingly. So anyway, I hope this video helps. I have not found one like it on the Internet. And of course, if I didn't point out that uh, this video or the ideas in this video might not work for your project, uh, you might need to contact an engineer, then I just wouldn't be doing my job as uh, what you guys expect from me either. So always check with an engineer before you do something like this. And uh, if you like the video, you know what to do. Hit the old thumbs up button. Any questions, leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.